Elmatic. Check. Yo, let me start you from the Genesis. Far from where the finish is. No role models, just empty bottles of Guinnesses. I give you Gerald McClellan. McClellan. McClellan was originally from Milwaukee. I know he has at least three first-round knockouts, but he, he never fought anybody of note. Left jab sticking out there, McClellan, and now another big right hand just barely misses, and that's a right that does land it. Gerald McClellan is a left hook, just rocks John Gordon, bounces off the ropes, and those ropes are loose. Uh, he certainly has to uh, keep his hands and his elbows inside the banner. The big left hook and bounce off the mat goes John Gordon. Well, Grable will stop the bout about a minute and a half into round number two. Gerald McClellan continues his KO say The crowd loves this kid. Just perhaps you want to challenge my style of rap. Talking about you bus cops, we know that's just a pile of crap. The underground is where I dwell at. It's where I find my una de las tres derrotas que tiene Williamson eh, la sufrió frente al actual campeón semico. Victory is mine, yeah, surprisingly, I've been waiting for your next mistake. A ten-round draw with the uh, undefeated James Tony from these parts. Williams uh, upping the competition at this point of his career. A target right in front. And this is where Gerald McDonald is at his best. The first few rounds. Look at these punches this round. A nice, effective... He had uh, 14 fights uh, of his uh, 15 wins, ended in the first two rounds. Been a street brawl, I strike men like lightning. You seen what happened in my last fight, friend? I hiked in. I beat kids with lead pipes. I leave trails of dead mics where I'm from. Niggas choose to like. There's a left behind the right elbow from the clown. He had something on it. There's another one. In Brooks rounds. He didn't want any more. Did you see that? He didn't see it done. He's trying to single Bobby Watson. Come here. Yeah. Get me out of this. Now they want rounds. They want this. They want that. But you can't tell a guy not to go and finish it early. Look at the left of the body. Though. The, the, right, the right elbow of Brooks is right down. He does not want that left of the body at all. Goes down again. Right in the corner. That's and all. that's it. Bobby Watson will stop the fight. It's over. McGarvey. The former WBC light middleweight champion wearing the white trunks against the 24-year-old Gerald McClellan. He's 138. And he's hurt a right hand from the young man McClellan. And McGarvey's over in the opening 30 seconds. McGarvey is 31 years old now and looking very vulnerable to anything that hits him on the chin. But the former world light middleweight champion now all too vulnerable to heavy punching and McClellan of the United States has won the vacant world boxing organization title all the tools with McClellan in terms of offense and part of the reason is his long credentials in terms of combination to the head almost threw him out of the rope uh, out of the ring but this is not much of a workout there it is it's over now Lester Yarbrough's in with some big opponents and supposedly he's gone on an average seven or eight rounds with these guys but he had no chance against Gerald McClellan right with a dangerous 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 number one hit man in America Track of statistics, all 22 of those KOs have come inside three rounds, so don't blink when it comes to Gerald McClellan. Another good jab from McClellan. Again, snapping the head back of Sullivan. McClellan does with the jabs. Well, the more we talked to... Oh, the right hand! Staggers him. Another one. 
down he goes. Fight's on the zip. 40 seconds into the fight, Gerald McClellan with the first hard punch he landed. Virtually ended it at that point. Did you know when you hit him with that right hand he wasn't getting up? Well, I was just telling Emmanuel I have a tendency every time I land the right hand on the chin, I turn and walk before the opponent falls because, you know, I'm confident in it. So, but I came back and jumped on him. I woke up about that coma 2001. About the same time Dre dropped 2001. Three years later, That's the that column in the Gold done. Trunks World Class Fighter. He is the WBO middleweight champion. This fight is uh, over the weight limit. He's in at 168, and Harvey's in at 171 and a half. Oh, big shot already, and Harvey's down. Gets right back up. He'll have to take the eight pound. He hit him with the right hand and then a the left uppercut. Six. The other factor is uh, McClellan is coming off eight straight knockout victories over the past three years. Big body shot. Steve Harvey overmatched. He was hit that time. The three knockdown rule takes effect and he'll be scored as a technical knockout. the hook. Certainly not the case in the past. Well, I'll tell you, he is a tremendous puncher, which has always scared everybody. I mean, no one wants to fight anyone that's that dangerous. But I mean, but Julian Jackson starts in a hurry, as you can see. There's nice, good. There it is, a big right hand. McClellan's waiting with the jab and trying to run the way in. Something we spoke about earlier, using that jab. Bam, the right hand over the top. McClellan can bang, as we said. You got to look for this guy early. Here he is early. And Jackson is rocked in the opening minute. Of the fight. Ran into a good left hook. He himself, for just a minute there, was stumbling, stumbling and staggered. That's the best thing that Jackson does, is come back from being hurt. He's hurt, but he comes back, and when he comes back, he's got power. That's very strange, and it's caught McClellan off guard. He didn't expect that kind of power. He mentioned earlier he didn't want to be reckless, and he came out very calm, but here he is. He is attacking Julian Jackson. And Jackson spinning around. He doesn't pay as much attention to defense. And it's, it's gotten to be a little more chess like right now, but the big bombs are still coming. And Jack, and Jackson has kicked it into another gear in the second round. Of it. But not having any effect on McClellan, who comes back strong, but back comes Jackson with a heavy right. One thing about Julian Jackson, you can hurt him, but never count him out. Not only can he punch with both hands, but he inside this ring is a vicious, vicious man. McClellan thinks Jackson is looking ahead to Terry Norris, who is sitting ringside off to our right. I don't know if either one of these two guys got anything in mind except survival here. And Gerald, Gerald is looking scared. Meanwhile, Julian Jackson, 46 and 1, 43 knockouts, two-time world champion. Oh, look out! I haven't seen McClellan in a lot of fights where he's gotten hit hard, and I was always wondering just how good is his chin. And right now, it doesn't seem to be too bad. McClellan hanging in there. That right missed, and a countering left. Also, a grazing blow by McClellan. Unintentional punt, and Julian has got it. Julian Jackson complaining. There's a big left hand by McClellan. Hard punches by... Another oh. big right hand right on the butt. The right hand that Julian Jackson's aiming at the body to could take its toll in three or four rounds and really debilitate Gerald McClellan. Julian's doing his homework to the body, no, no doubt about that. He may be sacrificing a round, but he's really putting in some shots. Jackson being frustrated by 25-year-old Gerald McClellan. Little wink of the eye by McClellan as he eluded a punch. And all the fluidity and reflex, and that takes your legs out from under you. Oh, nice shot by Julian. As he goes upstairs, no chance of south of oh. there. Julian got a winner right here. Down goes Jackson. A left hook by Joe McClellan. Turn right hand down the pipe, and it was Verdi a lead right hand. Finishing it off with the left hand, and down is Jackson. Bringing that dirty, dirty. Bringing that 30. Music with a quick extension. Well, the WBC middleweight championship. Jay Bell in the white trunks. He's the challenger and the trunk. And look at this. Big left hook to the body, right in the solar plexus. Remember, those, those are the kind of shots to take your leg out, to take your guts out. You can't get up if you want to get up. I mean, that's nothing but a terrifically played shot. We just did receive a word that this indeed was the fastest knockout in middleweight championship history.
McClellan said he wants the early knockout. Heavy-handed, explosive, lightning quick, going for the thunder there. Looking to end it in the first minute. There goes Baptist down. Crumbling to the deck. And he comes back to finish it off. Baptist in dire trouble. Sport. Your life cut short, you fell short. The pressure's on high, full court. My team torn, When Gerald McClellan, a 28-year-old from Freeport, Illinois, knocked out Julian Jackson, he not only won the WBC Middleweight Championship, he became the heir apparent to Jackson's unofficial title of boxing's hardest hitter, pound for pound. It's a scary feeling when you hit somebody and knock them out, knock them unconscious. You know, you can tell before the person fall that he's on his way down. When I land a, a good shot, a right hand or left hook, you know, it's a good feeling. You know, it's like, to me, knocking somebody out is like, it's like having sex, you know what I mean? That's a, it's a good feeling. For Jackson could be to get this fight past the fourth or fifth round. Well, McClellan's come out with a real good jab. Oh, a big right hand. Jackson. That's the fastest I've ever seen you work. Well, you know, I work hard, you know, I train hard. I know with my punching power and boxing ability, whenever I hit a guy on the chin with either hand or to the body, he's gonna go, he's gonna be in trouble. Did Julian ever get one shot in that you felt? Well, I got a little bruise in my right eye. I don't know if it was a, a punch or um, his hair, I don't know what it was, but you know, I was too busy trying to, you know, get him out of there. I wasn't worried about what he was throwing back. The first shot I threw him with, I knew I had him. The very first shot he hit me with, he was weak, he felt like 147 pounds. Since the Ben fight, Gerald G-Man McClellan has lived in poverty. He needs 24-7 care. The fame, money, fast cars, women, and adulation of the crowd are gone. G-Man's sister, Lisa, and close family care for him round the clock. He's like, what happened to me? How come I can't see? How come I'm blind? And he kept saying, that's real fucked up. That's just real fucked up. And I said, well, don't worry. I said, I'll see for both of us. He's like, why are you making fun of me? That's not funny. He's like, that's fucked up, Lisa. 
Gerald McClellan still lives in near poverty in Freeport, Illinois, struggling to pay his bills and survive. He is a testament to the warrior ethos and the power of the human spirit. 